crafty fam, it's Alex Vanover and welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm going to be showing you craft ideas for summer that you can make using your Cricut machine, sublimation, or just a heat press. In this video, we're going to be exploring products from a new DIY Alex partner company called Heat Transfer Warehouse. So thank you so much to Heat Transfer Warehouse for sponsoring this video. These summer Cricut craft ideas are perfect for beginner sublimation crafters, since you don't need a printer for this project, beginner rhinestone crafters, as well as vinyl crafters. So let's get into this tutorial. Summer craft idea number one is sublimation hardboard earrings. I love this set of earrings because it comes with 10 pairs in the box, including the hardware that you'll need for the earrings. The first thing that I need to do before I sublimate them is to clean them off using a lint roller to remove any dust or dirt that could be on them. Next, I'm going to grab my Wallace Sub sublimation pattern sheets in the color pastel tie dye. I know I want to use the center of the sublimation sheet because that's what's going to look really great on these earrings. So I'm actually gonna cut into the center of the sheet so that I can line it up exactly where I want it on my earrings. But be sure to save any of scraps that you have from your sublimation sheets for future projects. Next, I'll line up my earrings where I want to place them on the sheet and trim away any excess paper. I'm going to sublimate the back of the earrings as well, so I'll save the larger scrap pieces for the back of my earrings. To stabilize the sublimation sheet, be sure to use some Caesar Easy Mask. Peel off the backing of the mask and then stick the sublimation sheet to the mask but be sure that you place the back or the white side of the sublimation sheet onto the mask so that the ink side is facing out. Then squeegee away any excess bubbles. Next, cut the easy mask apart so that each earring can be placed separately. Be sure that the side of your earring that you want to sublimate is against the sheet's inked side. Then secure the earring in place on the sheet using heat tape. Also prepare two pieces of the sublimation sheet and mask for the back side of the earring and set those aside until you're ready to sublimate the back of the earring. Next, it's time to preheat your heat press to 400 degrees for 60 seconds and set the pressure to medium to firm. Once your heat press is heated up, Next, it's time to prepare your press for the earrings. Start by placing a piece of butcher paper on the bottom platen of the heat press. Then add a second piece of butcher paper that you fold hamburger style to cover both sides of the earrings. Next, place the sublimation sheets with the white side facing up at you, with the sticky side of the easy mask facing down at the platen of the heat press, and tack it down into the butcher paper. Then fold the butcher paper over to cover the top of the earring. Once you're ready, lower the handle of the heat press and begin sublimating. When the timer goes off, raise the handle of the heat press and peel the sublimation sheets off the earrings while they're still very hot. Be sure to use a heat glove to hold the earring while you remove the sheet and the heat tape using tweezers. Then you can see how bright, bold, and beautiful these earrings sublimated. Next, we're going to repeat all the same steps to sublimate the back side of the earrings. Just be sure to use fresh sheets of butcher paper on your heat press so that any ink that bled onto the butcher paper from the first press doesn't end up being pressed onto something else by accident. Then once you remove the sublimation sheets, you have beautiful earrings on both sides. Next, it's time to attach the hardware onto the earrings. First, you want to work with a stirrup shaped piece of hardware that is going to secure the earrings whole. Use jewelry pliers to pull them apart in opposite directions. Then place the thinnest part through the earrings hole and push the two sides of the hardware back together so it's pinching the earring in between the two sides. I use tweezers to do this, but you can also use jewelry pliers or just use your fingers. Then repeat adding the hardware onto the other earring. Next, it's time to add the hook to the earrings. Use your jewelry pliers and twist the jump ring in opposite directions. Place the earring and the hardware onto the jump ring. Then use the jewelry pliers to twist the jump ring back into place so that the earring is secure on the jump ring. Then repeat on the other earring and you're finished. If these tie-dye earrings don't scream summertime, then I don't know what does. They turned out so cute. So 
So our next project idea is a summer themed wine tumbler because I don't know about you, but there's nothing better to me than sitting by the bonfire, drinking a glass of wine in the summertime. So I made the super cute design already using a font called Bold Brush, which I will link for you guys in the description below. I just made sure to weld all the letters and then attach them so that they would cut all together out of this lime green wallet cut PSV vinyl. And then I also added this little sunshine um, symbol that I found in Cricut Design Space. And I'm gonna cut this out of some orange wallet cut PSV vinyl. So once your design is ready to go, then of course you need to size it. So I decided to make mine 3.5 inches wide by 3.3 inches high. That way I don't hit the bottom taper on the bottom of my wine tumbler. And once everything is ready to roll, then I'll click the green make it button to double check that everything looks correct on my screen. So here I have the um, sun on the orange mat and all of my um, sentiment here on the green mat. So we're good to go. So I'll go ahead and click the continue button. Then when my Cricut Maker 3 connects, next I'm going to choose my cut setting. And I found that the best cut setting for this wall of cut vinyl is the premium vinyl permanent glossy setting. And then I'm gonna choose remember material settings. I don't have to change the cut setting in between my mats. So now I'm gonna hop over to my Cricut machine to cut this out and weed it. And I will see you guys over at my craft table to assemble our wine tumbler. To begin assembling our wine tumbler, I'm going to clean it off with rubbing alcohol to remove any dirt or fingerprints. While the tumbler dries, I'm going to apply transfer tape to the vinyl. I am using Caesar application tape, and I found that it's super sticky and that can make the vinyl hard to remove once it's on the tumbler. So I like to stick my tape to the table or my shirt before sticking it to the vinyl to remove some of the tack. So now I wanna show you my favorite way to apply transfer tape to vinyl so that there are as few bubbles as possible. If you picture this demonstration from a side perspective, I begin by centering the tape over the vinyl and then sticking just one finger to each side of the tape. Then push your fingers together so that the top of the transfer tape creates a U or a horseshoe shape on top of the transfer tape. Then I like to stick down the center section then stick down one side and then the other. Then burnish the vinyl and transfer tape using your squeegee. Then use that method to apply transfer tape to both vinyl decals. Next, it's time to apply the vinyl to our tumbler. I like to use a tumbler holder to keep the tumbler from rolling side to side. I'm going to begin by placing the main part of the design above the taper on the tumbler but also leave room for the sun at the top of the design. So I'll apply the vinyl and transfer tape to the tumbler in the same U-shaped method that I used to apply the transfer tape to the vinyl. Then after I squeegee it down, it's time to remove the transfer tape from the vinyl. Then I'll repeat the same application technique for the sun design. Lastly, since I placed the sunshine area of the design a little bit high, I need to trim some of the vinyl away so it doesn't stick above the rim using an X-Acto knife. Then once we're finished trimming, we have a super cute bonfire ready wine tumbler. Summer craft idea number three is a rhinestone tank top. Begin by preheating your press to 335 degrees for 15 seconds with medium to firm pressure. Then swing your platen out of the way so you can line up the tank top and not need to move your shirt. I am using a Bella canvas tank top that the heat transfer warehouse carries, and I think it's gonna be such a cute shirt for the 4th of July. If you've never worked with hot fix rhinestones like me, these rhinestone transfers make it so quick and easy. All you need to do is remove the backing from the transfer, and then the rest of the way is basically like working with HTV. I want to do a left breast logo on this tank top since it's a small transfer. So when lining this up on the tank top, I like to place it a, my usual three finger width or three inches down from the collar. Then I need to place it so that the tails of the bow are just to the left of the center tag. You don't want it too far over or it's gonna end up basically along the armpit of the shirt and that's not flattering on anyone. So just a little bit left of center is good enough. It took me a couple of tries to get the place where I wanted it, but once I figured it out, the carrier sheet is sticky. So you can push it down onto the fabric to keep it in place. Then I removed any other major seams from the press, 
so the rhinestones would get good pressure. Then be sure to add a cover sheet like a Teflon sheet and you're ready to press. Once it's finished pressing, let the rhinestones cool until they are cool to the touch before removing the carrier sheet. Once they're cool enough, peel your carrier sheet and your rhinestone project is finished. Check out how sparkly and bright this turned out. I cannot wait to wear it all summer long. One of these craft ideas was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. If you learned something in this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel for more videos a lot like this one every single week. I love connecting with my crafty fam community through my Facebook groups and chatting with you on social media. So I'll leave links for my Facebook groups and all my social media down in the description below so you can get connected. All the hearts.